Hey guys, I'm Suts. I'm going to tell you about the brand new topic, the evolution of bones. So before starting the video, hit thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I know most of the people will get bored listening about bones, but this is one of a kind. Bone is a specialized connective tissue that is made up of type 1 collagen and calcium phosphate. It is a very strong and rigid tissue required for locomotion, movement and also for the formation of stem cells. Bone has a molecular components such as the organic cells in matrix and inorganic minerals such as hydroxyapatite. So with this introduction we can start off with the origin and evolution of bones. About 1.5 billion years ago there was a harsh movement of tectonic plates on earth. So due to this violent moves of tectonic plates a huge amount of minerals including the calcium carbonate were washed into the oceans. This created a possibility for its inhabitants of developing hard body parts such as the shells and spines. At first, this helped the unicellular organisms to cope with the excessive amount of minerals and to prevent overcrusting. It also led to the sharp increase in diversity of the multicellular organisms and their fossils. Going back to the Cambrian period, Trilobites were exclusively marine animals that appeared in the Cambrian period and persisted till the Permian. The trilobites had a hard upper shell called the carpaces. Those were made of calcium carbonate mineral called calcite. Then similar organisms appeared called ammonites. They lived during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. The shells of ammonites were made up of calcium carbonate mineral called aragonite. But over long time periods, this changes into the more stable mineral form of calcium carbonate called as calcite. So generally when we see the ancient creatures had shells made of calcium carbonate. Then the advanced organisms with more developed specialized tissues and complexity appeared. Before bones came the most primitive bone-like tissue called aspidin. The aspidin was interpreted as a cellular bone, acellular bone, dentine or an intermediate of dentine and bone because it was similar to enamel, bone and dentine. This aspidin was found in some jawless vertebrate fossils such as the galeaspids like heterostrachy and ostracoderms. It was also found in the thelodonts and anaspid species. The first chordates appeared in the Devonian and Silurian period. And the earliest vertebrates were the jawless fish called hagfish. These hagfish were the first organisms to have bones. They had skull but no vertebral column. As there were spontaneous changes in evolution, the calcium carbonate structures went down and the animals developed the structure that was made up of calcium phosphate and those structures were the bones. Early vertebrates always lived in the water but Later, animals started to move from water to land. They were the amphibians such as frogs. And these amphibians also developed bones. Further, in the Jurassic period, giant reptiles called the dinosaurs ruled the planet and they had a complete skeletal system made up of bones. Even now, we use the dinosaur bones for fossil dating. The bones in dinosaurs were made of calcium phosphate and collagen and also they had a network of blood vessels. Not only the bones but the dinosaurs also had a sharp dagger-like teeth with enamel and dentine. And then there was a Cretaceous extinction where the dinosaurs died. But then the birds evolved from dinosaurs and there is connecting link between the birds and dinosaurs that is called as Archaeopteryx. Also, a lack of connecting links suggests that the process of biomineralization, that means the formation of bones, shells and teeth, this biomineralization evolved 
independently in several phyla. The earliest mineralized structures in vertebrate lineages were tooth-like structures called odontodes. After the birds, we mammals, we humans were developed as the most advanced vertebrates with bones. We all know the scientist named Ernst Haeckel. He also researched about bones and he gave one law, that is the Ernst Haeckel's biogenetic law. He stated that the skeletons of ancestral vertebrates were assumed to be derived from cartilage which is analogous to their embryonic skeleton. But the other scientists nowadays say that the evidence of mineralization of tissues is often related to a collection of genes called as SCPP genes that are present in various vertebrate lineages. SCCP genes stands for Specific Secretory Calcium Binding Phosphoprotein Genes. The SCCP genes codes to form bone, dentine and enamel. Hence, this suggested that there is a close relationship between the bone, dentine and enamel in terms of mineralization. The reports of skeletogenesis suggests that the evolution of distinct core gene networks is very essential to vertebrate phylogeny. If we take an example of molecular origins of skeletal development, it is from the runt family of genes called as the RUNX genes that are RUNX1 genes, RUNX2 genes and RUNX3 genes. These RUNX genes produce the RUNX proteins. These RUNX proteins regulate the key factors involved in the skeletogenesis. Also, an experiment was conducted on mice. The scientists collected and cultured the embryonic cells of mice. Then, they removed the RUNX2 genes in vitro. The mice was provided with all the growth factors and hormones for its development. Later, when they observed, the RUNX2 deficient mice lacked bones. From this, we came to know that the lack of RUNX2 genes leads to a bone disease called as cleidocranial dysplasia. Also, there is another gene called SOX9 gene. It plays a very important role by initiating chondrogenesis and prevents subsequent maturation. SOX9 dominates over RUNX2 in mesenchymal precursor cells that are destined for chondrogenic lineage. Lastly, we have the VDR, that is the vitamin D3 receptor. Vitamin D3 receptor is a nuclear hormone receptor. They mediate the interaction between ligands and gene expression in all animals. VDR enables the calcium and phosphate absorption from the gut. Its deficiency results in impaired bone mineralization and leads to a bone diseases such as rickets and osteomalacia. In the lineage leading to ammonites and trilobites, there was a widespread distribution of VDR, whereas the SOX9 and RUNX genes were the genetic cassettes that may have arrived in protochordates. Then from protochordates to chordates, the successive changes in the genome might have occurred through gene duplications, domain shuffling and changes in the genome. It might have led to the formation of agrican, osteonectin and SCCP gene that evolved in calcium binding. When we see into the embryonic development of bones, bones arise from three distinct lineages. The somites generate the axial skeleton, the lateral plate mesoderm generates the limb skeleton and the cranial neural crest gives rise to the branchial arc and craniofacial bones and cartilage. Mesoderm is the germal layer present between the ectoderm and endoderm. So this germal layer called mesoderm develops into a bone. Normally, the embryonic skeleton is first composed of the mesenchyme. 
these become the sites where ossification occurs. Ossification is a process of bone formation done by the bone remodeling. Now what is bone remodeling? It is a physiological process where the matured bone tissue is removed and replaced with a new bone tissue. This process requires two specialized cells called osteoclast and osteoblast. The density of bone is modulated by a group of cells called osteoclast. They are the multinucleated cells that resorb the bone tissue and they remove the matured bone tissues. Later, the new bone tissue in the reabsorption cavities are filled by the osteoblasts. The newly formed tissue by the osteoblast is called as the osteoid. It will have enough amount of collagen and calcium phosphate and it will be in a crystallized structure. Some of the osteoblast cells will remain in the osteoid and they will mature into the bone cells called as the osteocytes. In this video, we learnt the origin of bones and the evolution, how bones derived from shells and aspidin. We also learnt how bone-like structures varied from one organism to the other through the geological time scale by taking some example of ammonites, trilobites and dinosaurs and birds etc. We got to know how are different genes related in forming the bones and lastly we learnt the embryonic development of bones and bone remodeling. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any doubts, let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you.